Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Trailer wiring harness on a 2019 Ford Transit Connect. Now this is what our trailer wiring looks like when it's installed and a lot of times you'll see your trailer wiring down here, but that's not always the case. A lot of times you can store that four pole in the vehicle, which is really nice because it's gonna keep it protected from the elements and it's also gonna be there when you do need to use it. So ours is actually living inside. And again, very clean looking. And whenever we do need to hook up to our trailer to tow, we'll just simply pull our panel out. We can then take our four pole wiring and just drape this over. Now this can hang out of the vehicle. In fact, this weather stripping here should have enough give to where it's not going to damage the wiring. You just want to make sure that you're not getting it in the latch. But other than that, this can live right here, plug into your trailer. And then whenever you're done, you can just simply coil it back up and it's going to stay safe and clean in the cubby. So here we can see our module actually mounted up. We also have our wiring going into our taillights and it's a factory style plug which makes it really easy and plug and play. Now there are going to be a few small butt connectors that you'll be using to make some connections and that's just going to be for a power wire to run up to the 12 volt power supply and then putting a fuse holder but the rest of it is simply plug and play and the wiring actually goes to the passenger side underneath the scuff panel so that's all hidden as well and you're going to retain all your factory uh, lighting functions now the great part too is this is going to make it module protected meaning if there is any back feed from your trailer you're not going to short out anything it's going to keep everything protected and it also has a fuse to keep it protected as well now this is going to be a requirement if you are towing a trailer with lights or have accessories with lights on them um, and really this is going to be a nice addition anytime you're towing and overall this is a really easy install and it's going to give you all the lighting functions you need on your trailer including your running lights your turn signals as well as your brake lights so we're going to walk you through step by step to make sure you get your trailer wiring installed so let's take a look at that before we begin the actual installation, I kind of want to break down our trailer wiring harness here. So here we have the module, and this is kind of where all the connections are made from the factory. And off one side, we're going to have our four pole, and this is what's going to plug into the trailer. And it's going to live inside the vehicle, and whenever you need it, you'll be able to drape it out. Now, continuing on here, we're going to start with the black wire, and you'll see that this has been stripped back a little bit, and that's where we're gonna connect the extra loom of wire that comes in the kit, and that's gonna be running up to our battery to get our 12 volt signal. We also have a green wire here that's coiled up, and it's pretty long, and the reason being is this is gonna route over to our passenger side underneath the skid scuff panel. And then following our other wires here, this is gonna go into our driver's side tail light, and then we also have a white wire with a ring terminal. So this is just gonna be a ground. It's gonna get grounded in to the frame of the vehicle or a spot of raw metal. So now that we kind of have the lay of the land, let's begin the installation. We're gonna to need to open up our hatch. And we'll be pulling off our scuff panel here. So it should be pretty easy. There's gonna be some clips. Uh, if you need to, this is going to be for the spare tire. You can pop that open just to kind of get a little bit of leverage. But working your hands kind of along this area, you'll get those clips to pop out. And just take your time here, as it is a little bit wider than the actual interior plastics here. So you may have to kind of work it out. But it should come out pretty easy like that. So we're going to need to plug into our taillight harness and that's where on our harness you'll see the factory style and these just kind of jump in between the two of them. So we're going to need to gain access to them. So on the driver's side as well as the passenger there's going to be these panels here and this is where your jack and spare tire tools are going to be. Now the plug is going to be kind of tricky. It's actually located above the seat belt area. Um, so if you kind of reach up there there's going to be a pocket and you'll see a clip um, now to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to take a trim panel tool here and pry it up. It's actually in a clip, so that's going to give us a little bit more room to work. If you don't have a trim panel tool, we have them here available at eTrailer. A flathead screwdriver would probably also work, um, but I'm going to kind of get underneath the plug, pry it up, and that's going to gain us a little bit of access, and then I can show you a little bit more. 
So it's gonna be hard to see, but if you see where the seat belt is above here in this uh, little cubby, that's where the plug's gonna be. You can see it here now that I've loosened it. So I just went underneath it and pried it up to get us a little bit of room. So now I'm gonna reach back there and separate our clip. I was able to separate them and this is what uh, one side of the plug looks like. This is where the tab is located. So you're just gonna wanna press on this and then separate them. So you may have to get two hands on there to pull them apart. But once they do pop apart, pretty easy here. We'll take, um, we have our brown, yellow, and red wire here. And it can really only plug in one way. Um, so this is just gonna jump in where those factory ones were. So that'll plug in here. And then the other side is gonna go to the other side of our plug. Again, it's kind of tight here. Um, we'll try to get this to where you can see it, but having a cameraman and myself in here is kind of a tight spot. So I'm doing a lot of this by feel, but we should be able to get an audible snap once that goes in place. Now there's also gonna be these orange tabs here. So uh, you're gonna wanna press these in and that's gonna kind of lock that in place. Now we're gonna wanna unravel our green wire here and we're gonna just pass this through this gap in the plastic. I'm kind of tight here, but once we get these through, we can route this over to our passenger side and we're just gonna repeat that same process uh, with the clips. And this wire is gonna live underneath this scuff panel. So you can just route that over accordingly and get that plugged in. And then we'll tidy it up a little bit later. So now we're gonna wanna grab our white wire with our ring terminal attached and we're gonna mount this to a factory ground. In fact, right up here, you can see this bolt with the wire and another ring terminal. We're just gonna take that bolt out and then put our ring terminal there. Now this is gonna be an eight millimeter socket. So just be careful not to drop this into uh, this area because you might not be able to find it again. So just take your time. So with your ring terminal, just make sure that the flat spot is facing towards the metal here. So now we can put this back up, making sure that we get our, that other ground is still in place. And then we can tighten this down. So now we have all of our connections made except for our power wire here and this is going to have to route to the battery so to keep this nice and clean what i'm going to do is take our spool of wire here and i'm going to feed it up the same way that our green wire ran over the passenger side and then we're going to just make our connection right here with our butt connectors that are included in the kit Now with all butt connector connections, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do crimp this down well. Uh, you don't wanna be chasing a loose connection. So once you have both of them connected, I always do just a quick tug just to make sure that they uh, won't come loose over time. Okay, so that's nice and solid. So before we mount this up, I'm gonna just make sure that I route some of my other wires. That way I know I have enough slack. Um, but what we're gonna be doing here, the four pole is gonna live in this cubby. And that way, whenever you're ready to actually use it, you'll be able to plop it out. Um, but this power wire is gonna need to feed through a grommet that's actually underneath here. Um, so pretty easy, I'm gonna just route it over and then you can see the grommets right here. So I'm gonna just drill a small hole, big enough to fit this wire through, pull it through, and then I'm gonna fill that up with some black silicone just to make sure that it stays watertight. So I'll make a little hole and pass this. And I've gone ahead and mounted up our module. I used the double-sided tape as well as the zip tie to kind of go around this mount. And that way I know that this is gonna stay here and how much slack I have left to kind of move it around. So I routed uh, my wires down here to kind of keep them clean. And I put a few zip ties along the way. And the excess green wire that we had on the passenger, I also zip tied up out of the way as well. So now that I know that the wires are in place, they're not gonna be moving, I actually uh, went ahead and put a little black silicone here on the hole, and that way it's gonna stay waterproof. Now I'm gonna head underneath the vehicle and kind of zip tie it up along the way, making our way to the battery. So we'll come back and I'll show you how I did that. 
Now when routing the power wire up to the battery, I'm always trying to stay away from heat, so your exhaust, and also some of the moving parts like suspension that can cause it to pinch and damage over time. So you can see from our grommet, I routed it using the hitch as kind of a mounting point through this hole in the frame just to kind of keep it up and out of the way. I also attached to our exhaust isolator hanger here and then kind of made our way around the spring, making sure it's not gonna fall into that spring over time. Now, as I kind of routed this up and over through the heat shield, I used some holes here that were on this mounting point for the trailing arm and just kind of routed it over. Now this is where it's gonna be a little bit easier for you because on the side here, you're gonna see plastic push pins. You can go ahead and pop those out just by going in that center section, pulling those out. And then what I did is tuck the wire behind and then once you put the push pins in place, that's gonna hold it in. It's gonna make it a lot easier for running. It's gonna keep it safe. Now, the main thing you wanna do is make sure you're not putting it on a pinch weld. That way, when you jack up the vehicle, that it's, it's not gonna puncture the wire. So from here, I poked out and routed it over. And you can see this point, I got to this center section above the cross member. And to get that up there, I used a fish wire technique, but I just use a spare airline tube, basically route it down, attach my wires, and then I pull it up from the top of the engine bay. So uh, main thing here you're gonna be looking for is obviously the exhaust going up, but there's also the steering column. Um, so just try to find a nice clean path. It is kind of tight, uh, but just try to route that up and then we'll zip tie it up in place once we get there. So I'm gonna lower this down and I'll show you how to make the connection to the battery. So I've gone ahead and pulled up our extra wire here and we're gonna wanna gain access to our battery and it's gonna be under this cover here. So we can pull that off and then we have our positive. We're gonna be tying into any one of these is actually gonna work well. Um, based on our ring terminal, it's probably gonna fit on all of them as well. So I'll be uh, taking that off with the socket, but before doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and just make my electrical connection. So seeing that we have uh, our terminal right there, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this extra because we're still gonna have to put this fuse holder in place and that's gonna gain us a little bit of extra length as well. So we'll go ahead and strip this back. And then we'll take our fuse holder that's in the kit and the butt connector that's also in the kit. And then we'll put these together. Now it's real important to make sure that you don't have the fuse in place when we hook this up to the battery because that's gonna send power and cause, potentially cause a short. So just wait until everything's fully connected and then we can put that fuse in. So with our butt connector in place here, We'll just check to make sure we got a good connection. Oh, see, and that's why we check. So I'm gonna strip this back a little, get a little bit more wire, and then recrimp that down. So now on the other end, we're gonna put our ring terminal here. And I'm gonna just strip this back just a little bit more, give us a better bite. I'm gonna bend the end also to give it a little bit more to uh, kind of tie into there. So now we have that connection made. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the nut on our battery terminal and get this hooked on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it on this one here. That's just gonna be a 10 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and get this nut loosened up and then take that off. Now with our ring terminal in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And with that tight, we can go ahead and take our fuse and place it in our fuse holder. And we can cap this up, put our cover back on. And now we officially have it all hooked up. We just need to test it to make sure that it's working. And we're gonna be using a four pole tester. We have these available here at e-trailer. It's really nice because it keeps it specific to the vehicle wiring. Um, the other way you can test is hook up to your trailer and run through the light sequence. Now the tricky part sometimes is if you're wiring on your trailer's bed, it could give you a false negative. Um, but go ahead, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when we run our running lights, our turn signals and brake lights, that these will light up accordingly. So now we'll run through our light sequence starting with our running lights. 
Next we'll do our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. Now with everything working properly, we can actually go ahead and get our interior panels buttoned back up. Now something I will point out, these yellow clips, they pop into the holes and you can see there might be some left behind. Uh, so I have one on this side and one on that side. And the tricky part is, is it's gonna be really hard to get those back in because these slide in. So I would suggest taking them out and then actually putting them in position. And that way it's gonna make it a lot easier to pop this back in. Now, as far as the four pole goes, we can actually just tuck this in our cubby and close it back up. And that way, whenever we need to use it, we can just drape this outside of the vehicle and still plug into our trailer. And then when not in use, you can simply put this panel back in and it's gonna be completely hidden. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt trailer wiring harness on a 2019 Ford Transit Connect.